new to paranormal on 4chan. Hurt my foot falling on a footy field. It got studded. Go see a doctor. Doctor sees I am due for a full checkup. All good. Am told that I could see a psych for free if I really want to. Fuck it. Would be good event. Go to a cheap one. Government won't pay for a proper session. Psych is really weird, but says I am fine and compliments my mind. Asks, Do you have imaginary friends? No. Would you consider making one for money? Long story short, he told me if I made an imaginary friend that he would give me a lot of cash, $5,000. Tells me that I need to enroll myself in a psych ward, which he will gladly pay for. He also says to list him as a reference, so that he can let me out whenever I want. Tells me that since he is a psych, he has leverage. Tells me every day to stare at the wall and imagine someone who looks exactly like me and talk to it. Harder than I thought. It is requiring a lot of concentration, but it is quite easy, without distractions and boredom to keep you going. Week passes, and it is now speaking back to me. Really. Is it's not like I'm thinking of its response anymore. It is really talking to me. Awesome. Get out, and it is hands down the easiest money I have ever made. See Psych again, and he wants to know all about my new friend. Tells him that I need to concentrate for him to appear. Looks exactly like me, except wears blue a lot. Blue is my favorite color. He began talking to me, and I don't even have to think of his response. Hands me over five grand and asks, Would you like to earn a bit more money? Tells me that if I begin to take medication and try to talk to it for an hour a day, and that he will give me $350 a week. Because I am a fucking moron, I agree. Now seeing the psych, once a week and giving him info on Blue. Eventually, I have to concentrate less and less in order to see Blue, and begin to realize that he is smart. Like, really smart. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like he retains absolutely everything I have ever learned. His personality is suave, and he is just genuinely cool. He smiles a lot and is always making jokes. And he gives generally good input whenever I discuss an issue with him. I think he is great. The drugs make me focus, and yet you feel like your brain is zoning out. I don't know how to explain it. I am realizing all the small details, but I have almost no thoughts on it at all. Every week, collect my money and see him more. Tell him all the new info. One morning, I wake up, put TV on, and boom. All I hear is, Daniel. Hey, and Blue is standing there. When my brain is the least active, basically, I don't even need to concentrate anymore. He is just there. I am firstly startled, and secondly, I am excited. I feel like this is massive news, so I call the psych and tell him immediately the news. He tells me that is great, but he is going to be away for a while, and that he will send the money through the mail. And that was the last I ever heard from him. Eventually, I run out of drugs, and in all honesty, that is when I think when things started to go downhill. Over the next few weeks, Blue began getting needy, and he started to try and distance me from my friends, from my studies, and wants all my attention on him. Start to see him in my dreams, and he now does not even just stand and follow me. He will read a book, or sit away from me. It is like having a roommate. One day, I was studying for an assignment, and Blue asks me, Would you like to know a secret? Sure. I can think for you if you want. Immediately think? No fucking way. I don't need any of that shit. He laughs and says, I know what you're thinking. Don't worry. I mean, if you read the info, I will prepare it as an essay for your class, and all you need to do is type it. Decide to give this a try. Let me tell you that thinking of two things at once is just amazing. You feel his thoughts collecting in your brain. You feel the structure for a whole essay being made in your head while you're reading through the information as quick as you can. I was not even comprehending what I was reading. I was going so fast. He tells me, done. And then I begin typing what he tells me. And I am astonished at the quality of the work. 
thank him, and he says, Hey, if you think that's great, I'm wanting more things to do, so how about whenever there is work to be done, I take over the thinking? Agree and think it's a dream come true. Begin acing my classes, and I'm glad that I could game, watch movies, and get all my schoolwork done in like 20 minutes to an hour. One day, get a bad grade. When I bring this up with Blue, and he says the teacher is wrong, go back to the teacher and she says, the opinion is not right. Blue fucking flips because he is in the room at the same time. Leave and then tell him that everyone makes mistakes, and that was a mistake. Daniel, are you on her side? I have always been on your side, and you're taking that fucking course side? That's it. We are not going to do the course anymore. Okay, I don't think he understands. It's my choice. Blue, we are not leaving the course. He falls silent. Dissipates. First time without him in a long time. Creepy feeling washes over me. Get home, and everything is so silent I put the TV on just so I could sleep. I should not have fucking went to sleep. Dream that I wake up in a chair in a classy looking room with a fireplace. Blue is across from me in a leather couch. Let's talk, Danny. I am doing all the work. I should have a say. I'm here to help you. I'm your friend. No, your brother. And I say we ditch this course. Hey, look, we can't just. No, we fucking can't. We are fucking leaving the course. I don't fucking get you after all I've fucking done. Wake up. Developed insomnia. Blank brain during class could not work. Literally in tears over not being able to do my work. Teacher brings it up. Says I'm failing. Blue appears randomly. Says nothing. Just smiles and disappears when I look at him. Try to sleep. He won't let me. I have no clue what the fuck to do. Questions and opinions, if you want. Be 16 year old me. Just sitting at my PC, watching YouTube and shit. It's about 2am. I get ready for bed, and make my dog move to the end of my bed. My face one, he moves to my pillow. Fuck it, dot PNG. Gets in bed, bites off. Hear a big, loud ass dog yelp right down my ear. Gets out of bed and turns on light. Dog looks pissed cause I woke it up with the light. Goes back to bed. The next day see fully mutilated dog, like no skin or anything, be dragged into a grave outside of my friend's house. At school, I ask him, What was with the dog burial? He says to me, We heard him yelp in the living room. When we went downstairs, we saw him dead, and all skin was gone. He looked like he was going to burst into tears. I nope when I see his dog, all skin and such, outside my house at 1am, sitting and staring at me. In college, GF lives in the creepy dorm on campus, one of two ground floor rooms of a 13 story tower, getting frisky a little, Friday night after drinking a little, hear these batshit crazy banging noises on her wall. We both what dot png in that direction you heard that right anon yeah what the hell was it though peek out of her room like a little pussy barely hanging my head out of the door neighbor's room is across the hall no way it was them only thing near the wall was a door that every tower had but no one i knew ever saw it opened hear doorknobs start rattling close the door harder and louder than a sonic boom Anon, what was it? I don't know, it's behind the old maintenance door. GF is too scared to get frisky that night. Hear sporadic banging from same direction rest of the night. And that's the story of how I got cock blocked by a ghost. Alright, same GF from the first post. Living together, apartments near college. Pretty chill. Living with her is nice and not really arguing or fighting. Pretty cool. Old as fuck apartments though, probably built in 1200 BC on a native burial ground. Weird shit always happening, water turning on, lights turning off, 
Shit moving around. General asshole ghost shit. Asshole even moves my keys from kitchen counter to coffee table like, what a dick. We would joke about it all the time, calling the ghost a douche and shit. Didn't really believe all of it, but still funny. One day, we hear this giant bang from the living room. We go out there to see a vase floating four feet off the ground. GF gasps. Vase flies and hits the wall next to the wall beside our heads. Nope to the power of a hundred thousand. Just try to get some sleep. Weird noises coming from living room all night. Move units the next weekend. Leave building ASAP into apartments. Not a thousand and nine years old. We still talk about it sometimes. B Firefighter. Small city town. Spooky call on abandoned farm. Random fire. Must be lightning or something. Get there and the entire old silo and barn is in flames. We start putting it out the best we can. The flames keep burning hotter and hotter, and we are no longer making much of a difference. We let it burn and control it from spreading. After it burns out, we go in to investigate. There is a charred skeleton, where the couch inside the barn used to be, sitting in a perfect upright position, with a shattered whiskey glass jammed into his hand. We eventually find man who owns property to identify the body. He says he checks the property once every few days, and he was there last night, checking on the property and everything was alright. The time he gives us doesn't make sense, because we were fighting the blaze, and the fire had already engulfed the barn house and silo by then. Investigator comes in and asks them harder questions and about the body in the charred ashes of the living room. The man laughs at the questions and asks if he can leave. We cannot hold him, obviously we have nothing against him. He drives off in an old red Chevy pickup back towards the abandoned property. Days later, coming through the farm, we find the charred body of a pickup. Red paint remnants and was a Chevy looking exactly like what the man was driving. We ask around the neighbors, and they tell us the property has not had any visitors for at least the last decade. They say the old man who owned it died eight to nine years ago. I freak out and nothing makes sense. To this day, no one knows what the fuck happened, and we assume the man died on his couch, and nobody knew about him till the lightning struck his barn nine years later and it burned. However, this doesn't explain the living man who we questioned and said he owns the property. We assume it was some crazy old dude or homeless person. I think it was a ghost. Be me, three days ago, very tired from work, sleeping, wake up around 10, all lights close, my body feels numb, can't move, starts groaning, suddenly a very painful feeling come from both of my hands, start screaming because I can't move my hands, finally manage to flail my hands, hit something. Purposely hit it again and again. Something groans back and starts moving away. Open eyes. Room lights is off. See a tinge of white skin and eye reflection in the edge of my vision. Stop screaming. Run outside. See human-like bite marks on both my hands. Next day. Can't sleep because too spooked. Still end up sleeping. Wake up around 1am. Same shit again. Body is numb, my hands still hurt. This time, my lights are on. Wasn't afraid to open my eyes. Can only open it slightly. Body is still numb. For some reason, I kick my foot. Hit something. See dog near my feet growling. I don't own a dog. Dog walks backwards to the small window on the upper part of my wall, like Spider-Man. Go back to sleep. Next day. Same shit again. Lights are off this time. Got myself a dim lamp. Wake up, 3am. Body is numb again. Fuck. Ready myself for the spooks. Open eyes again. Same shit. Too numb to fully open. 
scan the room, and then I hear it. Oink oink. It's a pig alright. There's a fucking pig next to me, sitting on my bed. Finally, managed to break off the numbness in my arms. Push pig off the bed. Pig starts oinking, scared and run away. Could hear its feet scratching on the floor. Still can't fully open my eyes for some reason. Pig returns, then oink on my face. I couldn't see it, but I hear the pig run away and went inside one of my cabinets or drawers. A few minutes later, could finally get up from my bed, turn on lights, look at the drawers. Suddenly, I feel anxious when I look at the largest one. Starts thinking if I should open it. It might be a door to my hell or wonderland. Nah, fuck it. Go to sleep. Be young me. Older house. Creaks and moans throughout the door weren't occasional. Older home, probably 50 years or so. Hear footsteps at night. But I always thought it was my parents because I had a bedtime. Probably a way my mind justified what I didn't know. Had a fear of the dark when I was young. Didn't like to go to the bathroom at night. Completely silent as well. Parents turned off AC at night. Doors would sometimes close. One night, really had to piss. Muster up the courage and go. As I walk to the bathroom, the door is already open. Faint night light kept it very dim. See a silhouette next to the shower curtain. Get really fucking spooked, but I had to go so bad. Finally, just go in and immediately turn on light. Nothing there. Take piss and get out. As I get out, a rubber bouncy ball just starts bouncing down the hallway. Like as if someone threw this bitch down and let it rip. Bouncing everywhere. I'm fucking screaming at this point. Parents bust down their door to see why the fuck I'm screaming. Ball is still bouncing. They see it. I try to explain to them it wasn't me. Tell me I'm tripping the fuck out and I must have hit it or something. Tell me to go back to sleep. They go back in their room. Have to walk back to room in the dark. Look into the bathroom and see the dark silhouette again. Always pissed before bed when everyone was up after that. 